The next project will be brought to us by Six Dogs Gin. One of those moments of clarity last night that sometimes only booze brings. <laughs> and uh, being so I've been wanting to make a tail sitter for a while. Dennis Baldwin made one. They're all the rage. It's what all the all the cool kids are doing. So so best to have a quick one myself. I'm dreadful at starting and not finishing projects. But let's start this one. I wonder if I'm the only person that suffers from a little project problem. Every time I start ferreting around my boxes looking for a bit of this and a bit of that, I find stuff that makes me stop. And in this case, that's a, a twin star prop from back in the day when we all used to fly twin stars. And boy, I love that aeroplane. That was a great aeroplane. And then also in this little box was um, that's one of my very first gyros back from when we all made tricopters back before quads were really a thing out of out of three gyros I think it was was it two or three I can't remember anyway that's from my um my gyro tricopter oh back in the day well that bit was fairly straightforward that that idea might might have merit um setting up the cube autopilot with the RG pilot firmware that's got pages and pages and pages of instructions, which is always a bit of a worry. For a multi-rotor or an aircraft, a conventional aircraft, you basically stick it in, auto-tune, and away you go. This is a little bit more worrying. I'm also a little, I'll tell you another thing I'm a little bit worried about. I'm worried about the relationship between the center of gravity, the thrust, and where these control surfaces are. Uh, I think I'm going to measure, uh, what was that Lockheed Martin tail sitter thing? Was it Lockheed Martin? Anyway. No, it wasn't Lockheed Martin, was it? Uh, the Pogo. I'm going to measure what the relationship was like in the Pogo. And I suspect that that will be perfect. Uh, well, it would, because it flew, and it flew as a manned aircraft. And I, I don't suspect that this relationship and this are particularly good. But we shall see if we get this flying. It's a start, and um, we move forward from here. So I'm into my lad's room again, because most of my tools have ended up in here. And I'm quite, actually, secretly quite proud of that, because... He's making, he's making, he's fiddling, he's doing, he's breaking, he's designing, even using technical drawing, getting into 3D printing, all that sort of thing. And that's why I worry about these overarching regulations um, that we see being proposed all around the world. It will stop youngsters doing that sort of thing. And they are the future of the aviation industry. It's very, very short-sighted. Um, I hope I'm utterly wrong and overplaying everything. But I would, I would like to think that regulators do have the future in mind when they're thinking about what they're uh, laying out. It's exactly the weather out there that tail sitters are no good in. It's blowing like bilio. So I don't think this would work too well in this. Um, getting towards adult beverage o'clock. Just thinking about where I'll put the speed controllers on the outside. Um, I'm also thinking, unlike Dennis Baldwin, who's who's got his GPS sort of that way. In fact, he's got it on the wing like on the wing like that. I'm going to mount mine vertically like that because we know from previous tests that they'll even receive these M8NNs. M8Ns are amaze balls, and they'll even receive stuff upside down on my desk, put it under my chair, and it still worked. But I'll be, and that's largely because of this huge ground plane. That's what really makes all the difference. But this tower glass antenna is great. Um, but we'll, I'll put it this way, because I care more about its accuracy when it's in the hover than when I do it in forward flight, I guess. So we'll try that. Trusty Pixel Cube, but it's... Uh, a beta one, so that's why it's white. That's a, a test one. And we'll give it a go. I guess I should mention some news that happened yesterday. Transport Canada did admit that they were um, looking into that uh, uh, collision. And so there is there is somebody who was on it and been tasked to run the report. So that'll be interesting to see what happens with that. And then what else was interesting? Oh, just some a few... A little bit of a trend, a little bit of a change. Some some reports of of big contracts for fixed wing UAS using things like lidar and using uh, magnetometers, doing those behind. So some real grown up jobs are getting big contracts. That's very interesting. Um, that's a bit of a change. So we shall see if that starts becoming the trend. Anyway, let's move towards flying this on the weekend and. Uh, 
well, it's tomorrow, Friday. Now, hopefully, there'll be very little news so I can get on and play. Uh, by the way, this is my son's... What is this? A spear, isn't it? It's a flight test spear. And it was me that mashed the nose, not him. Me. It was me. He's got another one, so he can use that. Anyway, adult beverage time. Back in uh, 2011, I think it was, when the world was in 4-3, uh, I did uh, make a copy of the pogo and i copied it faithfully and that's why it works so well i think and that was using a copter control board even before the cc3d uh, to control that and yeah it worked very well i think what i was doing here was um, pushing it away to test to s just to see how quickly it would get get back into position no gps of course it's all all back in the day and only a single motor so there was there was big uh, your um problems with it it's coping quite well there but uh, you ran out of authority uh, so I'd love to try it again with contra-rotating prop actually something else to never get done I suppose <laughs> 